So when you think about the streaming world and these services, um, there's been a huge pivot in the marketplace. When the services came out, everybody was focused on subscriber growth at all costs. And that's really changed over the last year. Profitability is taking center stage. And there's a lot that goes into getting profitable. You have to do things like raise prices. You have to do things like reduce your content spend. You have to introduce ad tiers, all of which we've seen over the last six months to a year. But you bring up the issue of churn and churn is going to be, in my opinion, the number one issue that has to be dealt with in terms of making these streaming services profitable. Oh, really? Um, well, maybe you can elaborate on that more. Is it one of these things where people sign up for Netflix for two months and binge watch Stranger Things and cancel? Or how does that work? So we've done, Adobe's done research with Antenna, which is the leading streaming service research firm. And over the last two years, 53% of subscribers have canceled their initial subscription. So think about that. 53%, that's more than half, are canceling their streaming service. And the industry really has looked at it historically as a binary approach. You're either a subscriber or not. And if you're not, we're going to spend marketing dollars going after you to try to get you to become a subscriber. But when you look at statistics like 53% are canceling, you have to go one level deeper to really understand underneath that 53%, where are, where are those people? What are the behaviors? What are the you know, actions that people are taking in a more sophisticated way? And so we've been looking at serial churn, which is an example where somebody's just going to go from one service to another. And you probably shouldn't be spending a lot of your dollars going after people who are just going to hop from one to another. That's not an efficient spend. Really where you need to be looking to, to market to or to people that you have a chance really of winning back or, you know, moving them into a different level of service. And so, you know, that's, that's an area that we've done, um, you know, considerable research on to try to help highlight where the, where the real issues are and where marketing can get much more efficient. Well, um, are, are there any, is there anything else you could tell us about how big churn is or what it yeah. costs the industry? Yeah. So they, we think of it this way uh, on the top one hand, you have serial churn. Those are people that are going to hop from service to service and you probably shouldn't spend a lot of money on them. On the other hand, you have loyalists. Those are people who are going to subscribe and they're always going to subscribe. They give you your credit, their credit card, set it and forget it. And so the real opportunity, we estimated $9 billion opportunity of middle ground, people who are in the middle and they're doing a whole bunch of different things. One is win back. So people who leave your service, 35%, 35% of them come back within 12 months. So how do you look at what, how do you accelerate that and get more people to come back sooner? There are also people we call plan managers and they're switching. You know, there's a lot of different tiers. Now you can move from a subscription only to an ad supported tier. You can move between bundles. Um, you know, there's ESPN, Hulu, Disney plus, and we've seen that a bundled subscriber has a 50% less chance of churning out. So it's about moving people into, you know, nudging them to take the actions that's going to reduce churn ultimately. Now, um, is there any kind of programming strategy that a streaming platform can take? Because uh, when you see, uh, you know, the services just dump an entire season onto binge watch, does that work to their detriment or what's the philosophy there? Yeah, so that, that's a question um, probably left for people who are evaluating the content strategies. Um, you know, I think you've seen the pendulum swing back to weekly releases as part of this yeah. churn challenge because when, um, you know, full seasons are, are dropped at once, people just go through that and then they, you know, they might churn out. So that is probably part of the, ch the churn and retention strategy is just to kind of have that play out over, you know, the full X amount of weeks. Yeah, and it, and it seems that uh, some of these services are adding more live sports. I don't know if that's kind of part of the strategy to keep people, you know, subscribed. Or, yeah, so, um, yeah, so bundled, bundled packages, including sports and news, are probably the next frontier. Um, Discovery, Warner Brothers Discovery recently uh, added news and sports into the Max bundle. 
So those are definitely um, areas that I think you're going to see others adding into the value of the bundle, which goes back to how do you reduce churn and make it profitable? It's having a breadth and depth and the most wide variety to keep somebody in that service. Well, finally, I just wanted to ask you if uh, there's anything you expect to see in this space in the next, I don't know, six months to a year or some, maybe something you'd like to see? Is there anything on your wish list? So at Adobe, we work with all the major media companies around data strategies and capturing that data, the technology that enables a lot of this messaging and personalization at scale is what we call it at Adobe. And so I really think over the next six months to a year, you're gonna see media companies doubling down on really building out the muscle, um, people process and technology, around becoming a lot more sophisticated in how they look at a subscriber journey and really making sure that they're talking to that subscriber across the entire journey.